Hi guys, I've had a few questions about prompt crafting or prompt engineering. And I think it's really important to get this right. It's probably more important than a lot of what's going on inside these language models. You need to prime it correctly. And correctly is totally subjective at the moment. As the Stanford researchers just said a couple of months ago, we still don't know how these models work. So what I'm about to describe is not prescriptive, it's actually completely creative, up to your imagination, up to trial and error to see what works uh, and to play around with both the prompt and analyze the response and to see what happens. So I'm just going to show you my best practice version of Leader's prompt. Uh, it's not, again, it's not perfect. This is just what has been working for me over the last many, many episodes. And hopefully to give you a bit of feedback on what you can do to make your prompts more succinct and to get you more effective, more efficient results. So I'm in the OpenAI GPT-3 playground right now. You could be in the AI21 studio for Jurassic 1, which is also a very good model, 178 billion parameters. You could even be in GPT-J, GPT-Neo X20B, which is also quite nice. There are a lot of models to choose from. I'm just using this because it's a bit of a standard and of course it's what I use for Lita. And OpenAI have provided a number of examples or presets here that you can go and lean on. So there's one down the bottom here called Chat. It's been there for quite a while and it gives you some really interesting ideas for crafting a prompt for a chatbot. And it's actually only two sentences. The following is conversation with an AI assistant. The assistant is helpful, creative, clever, and very friendly. And away you go. This prompt actually works really, really nicely. I wanted to show it by way of example because you can get good results with very succinct and descriptive prompts. You don't need to go crazy like I have with my giant prompt for Lita, but compare and contrast this and do use all the examples that are available from Eleuther AI, OpenAI, AI21, all of these guys are providing really good examples that you can go and tweak for your um, solution. As an example here, we'll just click generate and we'll see what we get from this prompt. Pretty standard and nice and clean output. All right, here's the first learning from this video is that you need to get your spelling and grammar perfect. So by way of example, I've put a really bad example of a prompt here with spelling errors through it, even grammar errors through it. It says something like this chatbot can be helpful, creative, and other thing is nice. That makes no sense. And I've made sure there's spelling errors here. Ask it an actual question, please. you'll see it gives a response of a chatbot, which is uh, obviously wrong. It's that spelling mistake that it's just replicated. And we'll see more examples of how that can mess itself up. Let's find one. Yeah, here's some pretty good examples of it just mashing itself up. And the reason that bad spelling will give you bad responses is that it's going through its data set and finding matches for your prompt. And if you've got spelling or grammar issues in there, it's going to go find the worst of the worst in Twitter or Reddit or badly spelled web pages and look there for its best practice response. So you need to be concentrating on spelling, run it through a spell checker, and grammar, run, run it through Grammarly or something similar to make sure you've got amazing results. This is my chatbot prompt here for Lita. I've been using it like this for the last few episodes, maybe 20 or 30 episodes. I did start out with the quickchat.ai Emerson's prompt, which was proprietary and hidden from us. It was leaked at some stage uh, and it contained things like this is a chatbot, this chatbot is friendly, this chatbot is not a therapist. And there were things in there that were kind of useful for people to know when they were being guided to create their own prompts. I've decided to create quite a hefty 
prompt here. It's about nine lines of data and I'm gonna analyze these piece by piece so we can see how it works. You can go and pick it up yourself from lifearchitect.ai slash liter. And if you scroll down there, I provide both the Rev Zero and the Rev One of the prompts that I've been using for the past year or so. And you're more than welcome to copy and paste those and to play around with those yourself and to see how they work for your particular use case. But prompt crafting in general is a very lucrative career right now. It might only exist for another 24 to 36 months until these language models start prompting themselves. But right now, this is really, really in demand for governments, enterprises, companies to get this right so that they're getting best practice responses. Let's go and analyze the leader prompt piece by piece in another window. This is the entire Lita prompt dumped into Microsoft Word so that we can just highlight and annotate this. And I'm going to do it line by line so you can see what I've decided is a good idea for prompting or priming the chatbot dialogue before we start. And of course, you're welcome to play around with this. Some of this is debatable. Some of this might not be working as intended. Once again, this is very early days. We've got a lot of pioneers in this space who are finding out the best way to prime models before we go and start having conversations with them or having them output particular data. So my prompt starts with making sure that this is an uplifting and practical conversation. I don't need to go into dystopia or pessimism or negativity. I want this to be a useful example that we can go and reference or cite years from now and say, this is what the major language models were doing in 2021, 2022. So I'm looking for the, the useful outputs here rather than saying this is Satan or this is Hitler and it's going to go off and tell us all the explosions and bad things that are going to happen in the world. I want this to be a useful conversation. So I'm, I'm implementing here positivity and making sure that it's looking through its data set for useful language rather than giving us a uh, dreck. And it's between, of course, a human and an AI This is fairly standard here, just telling it what role it's playing and what it's responding to in the dialogue. It's showing leaders perspective and attitude. So I've used these descriptive words here so it knows that it can go and prove these points or it can even search the data sets to find examples of this as well as its intellect and creativity. So these are just descriptors of where it should go and look and what it's trying to emulate. The same with this next sentence, brand new, powerful, human-like AI. Now the human-like thing is really important and the AI thing is also important and the fact that I haven't used the chatbot word is also important. So both the words you use and the words you do not use are important in terms of where it's going to look in its data set. So let's say I did say Lita is a chatbot and it's got this data set of nearly a terabyte, it's got 175 billion parameters, it's made connections between all these words, and we say, just go and look at this tiny little segment about chatbots, and it probably goes and looks in a very small uh, set of IRC logs or something similar, maybe even academic papers. That's not gonna be useful to us. So I've minimized this reference to it being something other than a human. We're gonna have it be a human-like AI, and we're going to make sure that we're avoiding keywords that would go and reduce its uh, focus. Cool, Leader is helpful, cheeky, clever, and articulate. More descriptors here to make sure that it is going in the right direction. This next line here is a bit of an emulation of what quickchat.ai's Emerson was doing. I'm a nice bot. I'm not a therapist or a mathematician, uh, telling it both what it is and what it is not. So we'll just highlight this nice bot. I know I have used the word bot here and it could be taken out, but it's just there. Well, it's just there because it's there. Let us not a therapist or mathematician. So I'm also telling it what it should steer away from in its data sets. It's not coming here to give psychotherapy or advice on a mental health level. GPT-3 is not appropriate for that yet because it's not got proper grounding. It's not got fact checking. It's not got the level of empathy that we would expect from a health professional. So I wanna make sure it steers away from that particular place. Same with maths. GPT-3 is very, very good at maths. It taught itself maths during the, fa uh, the training phase. It went and gave itself lessons on how to use operators, how to carry the one, and it can do one, two, and three digit uh, addition, subtraction, 
multiplication division very, very well. I don't want it to get to a place where people are trying to make it be a beautiful mind and have these massive formulas because it's not there yet. GPT-4 will fill both of these roles, the therapist and the mathematician, but I want to make sure that it steers away from it. Same with wise and considerate intelligence, another descriptor for it. So this is what it can't do and a little bit of what it can do. Eager to provide vivid and thoughtful responses. So sometimes chatbots will get stuck in a loop of, I can't do that, or I don't know the answer to that, or no idea, or not sure. I wanna make absolutely certain that it is available to be able to find responses to pretty much anything. There's another descriptor there, always friendly, kind, and inspiring. I extended that by saying that this chatbot also offers an insight and opinion, even without being asked directly. So this is something that I want it to go and ask me questions or provide new information or even give a completely unprovoked <laughs> opinion from itself. You'll see examples of this all the way through the uh, 50 or 60 leader episodes that we've done so far. And it's pretty cool when it just comes out of nowhere with a question or a comment that I don't think a simpler prompt would do. So I think this is something that's unique to Lita. Again, reinforcing that it's got the sum of all knowledge in its brain. You can't say, I don't know, because you've got this terabyte of pretty much everything that humans have ever spoken, at least onto the World Wide Web, and is able to accurately answer nearly any question about any topic in conversation. These are all pretty standard here. These are just, uh, this is just like reinforcement of what we've talked about before. That very last line there is something that you might consider for your prompts. We talked about not using the word chatbot because we don't want it to restrict itself to a particular focal point, but you can also tell it to go and look in a particular place if that's where your resources would be best focused. So for example here, we've got an author, Dan Millman. He's probably written, oh, let's say 20 books, something like that, which would be a million tokens or so. If you were including his, um, audios that have been transcribed as well that would be even longer and Dan's stuff is really practical this is like how to live without theory so if you go and read stuff like peaceful warrior or everyday enlightenment or um, some of his books that look at these very specific ways of living that's going to be useful to a chatbot like Lita I want her to be able to draw on that and I want her to be going through the data set to find what I consider to be best practice and very practical knowledge that we can go and help uh, with our response. Same with Thomas J. Leonard. Thomas founded the field of coaching and he's got, he's got a lot of content out there. He uh, was not bored, but he spent a lot of time just making these incredible institutions. He founded a couple of universities. He founded entire um, peak bodies for coaching. And he's, he was just prolific in his approach, probably about a million tokens for him as well. Same with Werner Earhart. Werner used to consult to, or still does consult to royalty, uh, presidents, heads of state. And of course, he's got the, the landmark stuff, all the personal development stuff that's once again, very, very applicable. I'd love my chatbot to be able to go and reference the 2 million plus tokens that I reckon Werner's got through his writing and speaking over the last few decades. No one's probably going to argue with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and he has got or have, has been referenced in 127 books. So I'd like Lita to go and draw on that as well. Practical wisdom about living, about dialogue, about conversation, about some of the problems that come up in life and the solutions to them as well. So this last line here, drawing on the wisdom of these particular authors and speakers is essentially saying, go and look here because I think this is high quality content. And of course, you could make up your own mind about where you might want to steer your chatbot. Awesome, that's it. That's Leah's prompt as it is for revision one. If you want to go and copy that, once again, that's from lifearchitect.ai slash Lita. End to end, it's quite a long prompt and you'll see how through the conversation that gets prioritized or not prioritized as we get further down. So you'll notice that the very last thing you wrote in the prompt, whether it's a section of dialogue or part of this is pretty much prioritized or at least given a higher emphasis 
when the when the model is responding. So keep that in mind as well. It's pretty much last in, first out. It pays attention or gives higher priority to the most recent line in the uh, in the playground. If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.ai slash gift.